Happy Halloween, everyone! We all love to eat yummy Halloween candies. Let us draw and paint. Let's start with our first candy. A stick and a skull face to begin with. Here goes the teeth, the nose and the eyes and some swirly lines for our candy stick. Another candy stick with Frankenstein's face. And a third candy stick with a ghost face. Boo! And a fourth candy stick that looks like a carved pumpkin. Magic! It's time to paint our Halloween candies. Purple for the skull. Yellow for the eyes and teeth. Green for the nose and for the candy stick too. And colour in with orange. Done with the first candy. Let's use some brown for Frankenstein's head. And golden colour for his eyes. Green for his face. For his mouth. Let's paint the candy stick blue and red. Done with the second candy. Now let's paint the ghost face pink. mouth blue and yellow for his spooky eyes and for the candy stick let's use some green and color in with orange done with the third one too for the last candy stick let us use some yellow for the pumpkin's face And red for the candy stick and for the eyes too. Let's use pink for his mouth. And blue for his nose and other parts of the candy stick. Yay! Our Halloween candies are done. They look so cool and spooky. Happy Halloween, everyone! Hi, friends! Today we're going to learn how to draw a seahorse. Wow! Brilliant! Start by drawing the outline, a curvy line. Coming back around from the bottom to make a tail. Starting on the other side now. Then we're going to do the snout and the long nose. And the head. Then we're going to do our fin, a wing-like part of the body. Finishing the border, we can start to do the facial features. So we're doing an eye. And then the scales that go along the back. Kind of like a spiky back. And some curvy lines. Finishing touches, so some lines on the tummy. Then we can do some sea plants around since seahorses normally live in sea, algae and coral reefs. We're 
we're going to just flacken up the border so that way when we colour it in the colours will really stand out. And our sea plants too. We're going to colour the main body of the seahorse in yellow. You can use a colour that you really like if you want. Did you know the seahorses are mainly found in shallow tropical salt water throughout the world? They live in sheltered areas like seagrass, estuaries, coral reefs and mangroves. You can find them in Pacific waters from North to South America. You can also find them in the Bahamas. They have been found in European waters too. And even in the Mediterranean Sea. Seahorse gets its name because of its horse-like appearance, its horse-like face and the body being a sea creature. Did you know that it comes from an ancient Greek word, hippocampus? Hippos meaning horse and campos meaning sea monster, since it has a head and neck suggestive of a horse. And it also features a segmented body armour, an upright posture and a curled tail. Now we're painting the spiky back pink. We love that pink against the yellow. What colour would you like to use for your seahorse? Maybe you could do a multi-coloured spine. You could start a new colour at each spiky point. That would be interesting. You could do the same on the tummy. Multi-coloured stripy tummy. We're doing it orange. I think that seahorse is wondering what's going on. Who's that colouring my tummy, he says. Did you know that seahorses range in size from 1.5 to 35.5 centimetres? That's quite a range. I have to say they are very beautiful creatures. Have you ever seen one? A real one? colour the snout in orange as well. Does shading our lines on the tummy? We like that nice shading effect. Slightly darker orange there. Now time to do the fin, which looks a bit like a wing. Doing that orange to match the tummy. Again, you can choose any colour you like and even split each segment into a different colour. We're using nice thin tipped pens here so that we can carefully shade in between the lines. A bit of a deeper orange on the lines. Gorgeous, look at that. Time to colour in our sea plants. Green, of course. This can be our algae. Doesn't that green colour really make the gorgeous seahorse stand out? It looks lovely next to the orange and yellow and pink. This could be algae or it could be coral, even seaweed. Now we're going to do some blue for the water and some bubbles. It's the finishing touches that make all the difference. And there you have it, seahorse. Hey fishy, how are you today? Ooh, I would love to draw and paint you. Starting with the outline of the body, kind of an egg shape on its side. A circle for the eyes and mouth a semicircle and we're going to do the top fin and the tail the bottom fin and now for the scales which are kind of overlapping semicircles you see they're really easy to do excellent now we're ready to paint let's go for yellow for the face 
gorgeous. And the great thing about this is you can do all your favourite colours. You could even get a picture of a fish and copy its colours. A pink mouth and purple now. We're going to do purple up here. Great. And here. And here. Now going for red for our first layer of scales. We're doing a rainbow fish, all different colours. Let's go for yellow next. Lovely, to match the face. Wow, that looks great against the purple, don't you think? Small strokes, there. Blue next. Gorgeous, my favourite colour. What's your favourite colour? You can do it all the same colour if you like. But we like rainbow fishies. Going for gold next. Ooh, lovely. And now, green. Yes. Finally, pink for the tail. Bigger strokes this time. Almost there. You're done. Brilliant. Well done. What a gorgeous glitter fish. Amazing. Kids, how would you like to draw and paint a cute little bunny? You would? Brilliant! Let's do the ears first. Long oval shapes. Then the head is a circle. Little tuft of hair. Circular eyes with some eyelashes, of course. Three on each side. The patches, the nose, the mouth. Now for the body. Arms, tummy, tail and feet. And the pads underneath. Perfect! Darkening up the border! And ready to paint! Yay! Going for a lovely pink colour for the inner ear. A cute pink and grey bunny. Ah, grey on the outside. I love these two colours together, they look awesome! Now a light grey or silver. The centre of the face there, carefully going around the little nose and the mouth. That's it. Going for the dark grey again. On either side, going around the eyes. Gorgeous. That's it. And done. Now pink for the tongue. And a little brown nose. And back to the light grey silver colour. We're going to do the body with the arms. Either side, leaving out the middle of the paws and the tummy. Then we're going back to pink for the tummy to match the inner ears. I love this baby pink colour, don't you? And the bottom of the feet the same. Dark grey. And the tail. And we are done! There you go! How super easy was that? And how super cute! I would love to have a bunny, wouldn't you? Hey kids, fancy a kappa? Ooh, looks lovely to me! Let's draw! We're going to do a lovely teacup with a heart in the middle. Doing the outside of the cup. And the handle. And the saucer now. Inside and outside rings. Brilliant! Teapot lid. The main body. Let's do the handle. And the spout. And the bottom. And some heart details in the middle to match our heart on the teacup. Aww. Don't they look just like the teapot and the teacup from Beauty and the Beast? Do you remember? Mrs. Potts, the teapot, and Chip, her son, was the teacup. Oh, but Chip had a little chip inside. Okay, going for brown for the inside of our teacup. Could be hot chocolate if you'd prefer. Red for the handle and the heart. And yellow for the main part. Lovely. How about pink for the inside of the saucer? Yes, and what colour should we do the outside? How about blue? Oh, that does look lovely, doesn't it? 
Now for the teapot. Yellow for the lid. Lovely. Matches the teacup, you know. And blue. That matches the outside of the saucer. Yes. And how about some pink? Brilliant. I love this matching set. Carefully painting around your love heart. Almost there. And done. Let's go for yellow for the hearts. Oh, lovely. And green for the spout. Why not? Fantastic. And the handle too. And we're done. There you have it. Go on. Have a cup of tea. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spout. Hello! Oh, look at this beautiful flower. Do you know what it is? That's right, it's a tulip. One of my favourites. Let's start by drawing the facial features. Eyes, mouth, eyelashes, a teardrop for the inner petal, and two on either side, a stalk, two leaves. Darkening up the border. Very easy to draw this flower's shape. Ready to paint already? Okay, let's go for a pink. A beautiful pink tulip. But you know tulips can be all different colours, so you can paint your favourite colour if you like. Or use your imagination. Why not do a rainbow tulip and paint each petal a different colour? Green leaves and stalk. That's right. Almost done already. And voila. And if you want to paint lots of these, you could make a whole field of tulips just like this one. Look, there's even yellow ones in the background and a windmill. Ooh, brilliant. Go on, give it a go. Hi, today we're going to draw and paint a rose, a beautiful flower, starting with the stem and the leaves, drawing the veins on the leaves. We're doing several leaves and then we start with the petals, nice curvy petals, one by one, at the top and the side, making our way to the middle and then a little fold in the centre. And let's not forget the thorns. Yes, roses have thorns. Right, let's go for a red rose. Of course, roses can be all different colours. Have you ever seen a rainbow rose? Oh, they're so beautiful. But red roses are probably the most popular and famous all around the world. Why? Because they are a symbol of love. Yes, you can give roses to your loved ones. Just mind the thorns. Green leaves, of course, and stem. And if you like, you can draw your favourite flower. You can find a picture on the computer or in a book and perhaps try to copy the shape. And a rose is so easy to make. And there you have it, a gorgeous red rose. You did it perfectly. Well done. Hey kids, this video is going to be so much fun! We're going to draw and paint a honeybee, starting with the antennae, then the oval shaped body, and of course the stripes, and the wings. Did you know that a bee's wings are actually so small, technically it shouldn't be able to fly? How amazing! Right, let's paint! Starting with black for the antennae and every other stripe. Do you know what a bee's antennae are used for? They're used for communicating. Isn't that amazing that bees communicate with each other? Right, we've gone for yellow next for the face, painting around those eyes. And of course, the remaining stripes will also be yellow. Gorgeous. We painted the sting black already and we're going for the wings. Blue for the wings. If you paint diagonally from side to side, you can paint more surface area faster. Good little tip for you. See, we're not going in straight lines up and down or side to side, we're going diagonally. Almost there, you're doing a great job. 
Yes, and we are done. That is absolutely beautiful. Hey kids, do you like unicorns? Do you love cake? Well, we're going to show you how to draw and paint a unicorn cake. Yay, we start with the horns on top. Little ones, three of them, and then a big one. Excellent, now some stars. And then we do the outline of the cake. It's going to be a slice of cake with some icing dripping down the side. And layers. This way we can do lots of different colours. Yay! How about a rainbow unicorn cake? Now we're going to darken up the border because that will make the colours really stand out. Perfect! That is a big slice of cake. Now let's start with purple. Purple for the top of the big horn. Then yellow. And green. Oh, I do love this colour combination. Some pink. And blue. Excellent. Now some green for the baby horns. And yellow. Lovely. Yellow stars too. Right, what colour shall we do the icing? Purple! Ooh, I love it! The depth of the colour of purple really makes the bright yellow stars and horns stand out. Fantastic! Paint really carefully within the black lines. And we're done! Let's go for our slices now. First we're going for pink. Pink and purple are like brother and sister. Gold! Round the dripping icing and yellow. I like these similar shades of colours next to each other. Let's go for green next. Break it up a little bit. It's nice to have diversity, don't you think? Hmm, how about some blue next? I would not mind a slice of this cake, would you? It looks delicious. Let's go for purple at the bottom to match the top. Oh, I love it. It's so sparkly. And we're done. Fantastic job. Well done, kids. You did it. Now, let's have a bite. Hey kids, would you like to learn how to draw flowers? It is super easy and you can do it all different ways. Look, let's show you. First of all, you draw your centre, which is just a little circle, and then some nice oval shapes to form your petals. And there you go. That was easy, wasn't it? Let's try a different one. This time we're going to do a little cut in the middle of each petal and they're a bit wider than the last one. For this flower, we're going to make the petals look like heart shapes. Perfect! This one has long, thin petals, just like a daisy. And we're doing a second layer as well. These petals are shorter and wider with a lovely detail around the centre. So you can experiment with these different shaped flowers. Use your imagination and think how many different types you could draw. This one has more pointy leaves and two layers. Do you know how many different types of flowers have been found in the world so far? About 400,000! Can you believe that? All of them are different. So have fun with this, be creative and experiment with different sized and shaped petals. OK, I think we're ready to paint. Ooh, let's start with this one. Purple for the centre. Some lovely yellow petals. I have to say, this is one of my favourite colour combinations. Purple and yellow. Absolutely gorgeous, don't you think? Maybe you could name your flowers. Make up your own names. Do you know what the 10 most popular flowers are? 
Let's tell you, we've got the rose. You all know roses, don't you? They come in all different colours, but most famous rose is a red rose. And we're going to paint this flower's petals red. Lovely. And we'll mix it up with a different colour in between because that will look very interesting. After roses, the most popular flower is the tulip. They also come in all different colours and they're absolutely gorgeous. Then you've got the sunflower, of course. Have you ever tried to grow a sunflower from a seed? I recommend it. They're amazing. And they're yellow, just like these petals. Also very popular and a wonderful sign of the first beginnings of spring is the daffodil. I'm sure you've seen those around. They are gorgeous and they really cheer people up after a hard, cold winter. Then we've got the marigold. Again, they can come in you know, slightly different shades. And here we're doing a lovely red one with a yellow centre. You can also do different shades of the same colour. It looks beautiful. Daisies, of course, are very popular. Have you ever tried to make a daisy chain? A necklace or a bracelet or even an anklet out of daisies, making a little hole in the end of the stem and then just joining them up together to form a band. It's so much fun. The orchid is one of the most beautiful flowers ever that we love to put them in our windows on display. Carnations are also very popular. Gerberas, which come in all different colours, just like this one. And jasmine. Jasmine has the most gorgeous smell. Let's go for yellow for the centre of this one and some purple on the outside. So it's like a backwards version of our first flower, which was yellow petals and purple inside. Let's carefully paint around our detail. There! Lovely. Hmm, let's do this one yellow in the middle. We've got a big centre point in this one and some pink around that. What colour do you think we should do our second layer of petals? Should we do it the same or a different colour? Yay, blue! What a great choice! Blue and pink go really well together, don't you think? That's looking lovely. OK, let's do the next one. So we're going to go for gold in the middle. And green around the outside. Beautiful. It's like a little sun shining in the centre of a green field. Almost there. And we're done. Excellent. Last but not least, let's do our long petalled flower. Green in the middle this time and pink petals. This one does look a bit like a daisy, doesn't it? It's just a different colour. Imagine if we had pink daisies, wouldn't that be wonderful? Flowers are just amazing and you can have loads of fun with this designing your own, even making up your own names. There you go. Now let's see them close up. Oh, look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Wow. Let's see another. Oh, look at that. Those colours are just wonderful. Oh, I'm feeling like summer is here already with all these gorgeous flowers. Flowers really brighten up your day, don't you think? So if you haven't already done so, I recommend you get some seeds and plant them in your garden if you have a garden. And if you don't, it doesn't matter. You can just plant them in some lovely pots. Do be sure to keep them in the sunshine and make sure you water them daily as well because flowers need sunshine and water to grow. You'll be so excited when you see those little green leaves sprouting up from the mud. Which one is your favourite? Oh, it's so difficult to decide. I just love them all. Well done. You did a fantastic job drawing and painting these gorgeous glitter flowers. Hey kids, how are you today? Would you like to draw and paint a sparkly squirrel with me? You would? Brilliant. We'll start by using a black pen to draw the outline. I'm going to do a foot and the leg the arm, fingers, tummy, 
Squirrel's holding a nut, so we draw that too. The other foot. Facial features. The eye, nose and mouth. The other ear. And finally, a big bushy tail. That's right, we've got to have a big bushy tail on a squirrel. Curvy lines. And done! Brilliant! Time to paint. Hmm, let's go with yellow first of all. We're going to paint our squirrel lovely and yellow. Look at that. I do say, Mr Squirrel, it looks fantastic with your blue eyes. Carefully painting with a small tipped paintbrush in between the black boundary lines. Painting the main body, so that's the face, the ears, the arms, the back, the legs. And, of course, the feet. You're doing really well. Keep going. Almost there. Done! Going for gold. The inside of the ear, around the mouth and, of course, the nut. Let's do the tummy the same colour too. Excellent. Going for black this time. We're going to paint the nose. And then brown for the nutshell. Time for a colourful tail, starting with pink for the first segment. Our squirrel has a lovely stripy tail. Yes, what next? How about purple? I love purple. And purple and pink are like brother and sister, you know. They just go so well together. And done! Last but not least, we're going for bright green because it's really good to have some contrast, don't you think? Excellent! Well done, kids! You did a great job! Go on, go along and eat that nut. Yummy! Hey kids, do you like music? Do you like musical instruments? Well, today we are going to show you how to draw and paint a glitter xylophone. You start by drawing lots of rectangles. That's right, a rectangle is where you've got two long sides and two short sides. Now in this picture, each rectangle is going to be slightly shorter than the previous one. Then we're going to join them all together with a long oblong shape on either side. They look a bit like sticks. Then we're going to draw circles on either end of each of our rectangles. The rectangles are the keys and the circles are the bits that hold them down. Then we're going to draw our beaters, so some long sticks with circular ends. Ready to paint! Starting with red. We're going to paint our first rectangle, taking care to paint around our circles. Beautiful! Do you play an instrument? Which instrument do you play? Yellow next! And if you don't play an instrument, is there one that you'd really love to learn? Do you have a favourite musical instrument? I love the xylophone. I love the sound it makes. It rings in my ears. It's just beautiful. Pink next. And of course, it's always fun hitting things with beaters, isn't it? Did you know that a xylophone is in fact a percussion instrument? That's right, it comes from the percussion family, exactly where the drums come from too. Green for the next one. But this is tuned percussion, meaning you can play a tune on it. Wow, this is looking fantastic already! What colour shall we paint our last key? Purple! My favourite! How about you? What's your favourite colour? I just love the sparkly paint, don't you? There! Let's paint our circle silver! Three, 
three more to go. And done. Right, now for the underneath, brown, because this is going to be made of wood. So on a xylophone, we've got a wooden body connecting it all together. And the keys, the bits that we hit with our beaters, they are made of metal. Ready for the beaters? We're going to use a lovely gold colour for the ends. What colour shall we paint the sticks? Blue! Oh, I do love a bit of blue, don't you? And there you have it, a gorgeous, colourful, glittery xylophone. Go on, play us a tune. Subscribe and watch more!